the smart city, I mean, it's, a, it's quite a nebulous concept, but for many, it's about delivering better cities, better outcomes for citizens, more efficient services. So one of the big mega trends is the whole rise of urbanization globally. So over half the world's population now lives in cities, and this is going to increase significantly over the coming decades. So from a smart city perspective is how do we apply new technologies to address some of the big challenges that we face as a result of urbanization. So how we use energy, how we address climate change, how we manage you know, the effects of extreme weather events. And so there's lots of issues that cities face that technology can help solve some of those big challenges. So a couple of years ago, we decided to create a smart city test bed to be able to take a more agile approach to, to smart cities. We wanted somewhere where we could trial and test new technology before we rolled it out to the rest of the city. So we chose two square kilometers in the center of the city. It's home to some massive tech companies. Google, just behind me here, employ 8,000 people. We have Facebook employ 4,000 people. We work with companies like Google, uh, IBM, Intel, SoftBank, MasterCard, Vodafone. The list is, is quite significant. So Smart Dublin is a collaboration across the four Dublin local authorities to really take the opportunity of smart cities uh, by building out a collaboration model uh, in a way that delivers great outcomes for citizens. We've taken a unique approach to smart city development here in, in the Docklands. Um, we have a triple helix model that we have the city, academia and research working together. And in that we've taken a citizen-centric approach to identifying challenges that citizens actually face in Dublin. As Jane Jacobs famously said, cities only work when they're designed for people and by people and with their inclusion. So we engage communities in a number of different ways, um, from challenge-based workshops that we run with different groups of local residents in the area, to online surveys and face-to-face -face kind of large-scale events that we would also run. We've run a number of workshops to date and identified over 500 challenges. Um, we can see clear themes emerging from that. Some of the challenges that have emerged have been um, challenges around uh, waste management. So we've deployed over 100 smart bins in the Docklands that are solar panel and they compress the rubbish. So they let the waste management team in Dublin City Council know when the bin is full. So instead of having to ground every bin every day, they can just go to the bins that are full, reducing the number of waste management or collection trucks that are on the road. We hear a lot about Internet of Things. But really what Internet of Things is about connecting people, it's connecting infrastructure, buildings, vehicles, and cyclists even, and, and it's about generating new data um, that allows us to make better decisions on our city. Cycling safety is a concern in cities, so a couple of years ago we partnered with a company called Seasense who've created a smart bike light. The smart bike light can connect to your phone using machine learning and AI. We can determine road surface quality and we can also determine near misses and dangerous areas for cyclists in the city. So we've deployed 500 of these uh, lights in Dublin. It also determines where people are cycling so we can start to build a map and heat maps of where people are cycling. We, we can start to see uh, pain points for uh, cycling safety in the city and also where there's very bad road surface quality so that can be fed back to city planners and they can start to improve cycling conditions in the city. So what we're looking at is real-time connected data-driven cities. For the first time cities are are playing a role in the deployment of network-based technology. So we need to use things like traffic lights and street lights and bus shelters and bins to deploy these technology. I think technologies like 5G are going to enhance our ability to collect more information in real time and again just increase that collaboration capacity that the city will have. So we're deploying this in the Docklands. It's a first of its kind urban 5G deployment and working with some of our partners here to deploy small cells outdoors and indoors. The technology that we're trialling and testing here and working with a company called Dense Air, um, they have now bought the Spectrum in uh, other countries such as Australia, New Zealand, uh, Belgium and Portugal. So the technology that we are trialling and testing in Dublin will be deployed across the world in those cities. As we grow the smart city concept globally we need to be very careful that we protect the rights of, of, of citizens in terms of the data that we collect, the data that we use. And so there's a big responsibility on the city to look at aspects of data literacy, data privacy and inclusion and make sure that the platforms that we're using are both safe and that they are inclusive and make sure that all of the citizens of the city are represented. And Dublin we take this uh, very seriously. We've recently established, a, I suppose, a digital right and ethics uh, working group. Through this collaboration with Maynooth University and they're helping us within the context of this data ethics programme to look at both the philosophical issues around 
how data is generated and how we should share it and use it, but also the compliance and regulation issues. Because it's easy to apply technology, but we need to apply technology thoughtfully. The key is that the, the smart city is happening now. It's not a concept anymore. I mean, cities are about attracting talent, about enabling talent and about driving innovation. And smart city is absolutely at the heart of that. And Dublin is really, you know, playing a leading role globally in this space.